Annie grew up in the small university town of New Concord, Ohio. It was a close-knit community, nearly idyllic in nature, and John lived just blocks away. We've known each other since we were two years old, so he was always right, right, right by my side. It wasn't until she was in the sixth grade that Annie realized that she might be different. One day, her teacher asked her to stand and recite a poem. So I got up and I started and I couldn't say anything. I'll always remember that. The teacher was just in utter shock. She had no idea that I, I couldn't talk. I realized I did have a problem. Although hurt and embarrassed, Annie never told her parents. That she was unaware of her disability seems hard to believe, except for one thing. My dad uh, was a stutterer. I'd like to ask him now why we never talked about his stuttering. That, that, that never came up. It didn't keep me from being happy. I had lots of friends. I didn't have to go out and meet people and grew up or people who took me as I was. By the time they reached high school, Annie and John's fate was sealed. And while they planned to elope after graduation, their parents insisted they go to college. But when Pearl Harbor struck, John joined the Marines. That really changed our lives. We had already planned to be married when we were out of, out of college, but uh, this changed things and changed our, our schedule considerably. Four days after he received his wings, John and Annie were married. When I graduated from flight school, I graduated, I think it was on a Thursday afternoon, and we were married the next Tuesday. I, I tell people quite often, I think I married above myself, and I mean that. As they left the community they'd known all their lives, Annie's routine changed dramatically. We were a Marine Corps family, so we moved around about every three years. Some of my earliest memories are helping mom, going with her to the store, being able to um, help communicate. Uh, our kids had to answer the phone. Annie would never use the telephone. Because the phone, you might say, was like a devil to me. I shouldn't call it a devil, but it was. Things like that were just normal. I certainly knew she stuttered, but I felt like we communicated just fine. If I did something wrong, I, I sure knew about it. I would go to church, I would go to PTA, I would go to scout meetings and things like that, but I was never made to really talk. It's just the way our family was. When John joined the Mercury Project, Annie was not completely on board. Way back then, I wasn't for going up into to God's heaven. Fly me to the moon. Let me play among the stars. So John found a way to help Annie see the opportunity as he did. They had an old ritual from John's war days that helped with the uncertainty. <laughs> well, before he before he would go on any flights. I remarked, uh, yeah, it won't be very long. I'm just going down the corner store to get some chewing gum. And that would be his way of saying goodbye to me. Why that came to mind, I'll never know. So when he, when we would see him launched or whatever, I would give each of our kids a stick. I still have those. Mercury made John America's hero, but Annie became more of a mystery to the public. Had the spotlight shifted to her. That's when I became very quiet. I was really paying attention to how they were taking me. I can't tell you how often I've seen people laugh at her. People think that she was deaf and dumb, so they would only talk to me. The people that do not understand our handicap wonder if uh, we are a little mentally retarded. Annie is certainly anything but that. She has as many thoughts as anybody else, but they just couldn't come out right. We were at a reception up on Capitol Hill. I was standing with her, and two people came up, and they talked at her. And when she um, had difficulty communicating, they literally turned around and walked away. That, that is something that I'll always remember. Incidents like that 
that left her knowing that uh, she needed to do therapy if there was ever such a thing as therapy uh, that would help her. The man who hurtled to fame as the first American to orbit the Earth tosses his space helmet into the ring as a political candidate. After Mercury, John was elected to the Senate. And when I would run for re-election, Annie had never been able to really participate. She'd go with me to all the events and all, but as far as her getting up and speaking, she was never able to do that. I think about how big a deal this had been for her. After having tried many forms of therapy that didn't help at all. One morning, an interview on the Today Show caught John's eye. I asked Annie if she would like for me to call down there and see if they thought she might fit the bill of what they were looking for. She was admitted to a three-week program where she had intensive therapy for her fluency issues. She really dedicated herself to fluency and to changing her, her life. I don't think any of us could have known what that was going to be like. It was so dramatic. The last day of those three weeks, I called John. I got a phone call at my Senate desk, and I took the call, and, and it was Annie talking to me without stuttering. He really couldn't believe that I had called him and I could talk to him over the phone. And I got a phone call and it's, it's mom on the phone. And, uh, you know, there she is, she's talking and I could understand everything. I'd never received a call from my mother before. I really smiled, mom, you know, one of those responses. Annie Glenn found her voice. Times have changed. For Annie Glenn, I feel like a butterfly that has been let out of a cocoon. All of a sudden, then she began to be able to speak to people. I can argue, I can make speeches. She did accept an invitation to give a speech. This was something she needed to do on her own. It was it was really important that none of us be there. Uh, she was so proud of it because it was something she had worked so hard for. I don't think any of us could have known what that was going to be like. It was so dramatic. She made public her struggle and she talked about how she worked to overcome. My priority now is to get my husband, John Glenn, that nomination. That's when things started to change. Little by little, Annie came out of the shadows and into the spotlight, this time on her own terms. She was doing it. It was just amazing. She was so different. Her life changed so dramatically as her fluency increased. The joy she found interacting with people was infectious. She has this wonderful ability to make the folks that she's speaking with feel special. When she walks in the room, everybody's turned towards Annie. She's made so many friends through the years and has helped so many people. A decade after her successful treatment and with growing confidence in herself, Annie became a champion for the cause. Asha has really opened up a complete new world for me. Annie's work in this field has been incredibly meaningful. She's done so much to build the confidence of people who stutter. It is an answer to a prayer to be able to help other people. And in 1987, the Annie Award was born. Over the years, we've had many individuals who have dealt with the personal adversity of a communication challenge or disorder and who have really prevailed. To Jane Seymour. Julie Andrews, Vice President Joseph Biden. I measure the significance of an award based on my respect and admiration for the individual or group who's making the award. And there's no award I've received in my career that matters more to me than the Annie Glenn Award. That's the power of that award. In our household, the Annie rates right up there with the Oscars, I can tell you that. Annie keeps a list. She carries a, a little list of all the Annie awardees in her, in her pocketbook. There it is. I love showing it off, because I'm very proud. 87 was James Earl Jones, the King's speech. David is a stutterer. Annie, like the King, stuttered and dealt with this impediment through her whole adult life. We all went to see that together. We came out of the movie and we were all kind of speechless. I mean, it was so dramatic. I think we had universal non-dry eyes. <laughs> it was a very moving experience for all of us as a family. And she was just a glow. Because it, it is so, so real. This 
experience was finally being recognized in such a respectful, professional way. It just astounds me, Annie, what you've done. She's a model of inspiration. Your story was one that kept me going. Your warmth, your character, and commitment to the cause. The whole way she's lived her life, her engagement with the human race. It's mom's way, appreciative and respectful and joyful. The quintessential role model. The, the gleam in her eyes. Gracious, kind. We should all look to that. And he thinks of other people. And it took great acts of courage to overcome a lot of this. And I'm very proud of her for that. So while John Glenn became a hero for our nation, giving hope to all while he made anything seem possible, Annie became a hero for those of us watching here on Earth. As she reminds us that for all who struggle with a communication disorder and those that work with them, heroes come in all forms. Thank you, all of you, for all that you do to help others. I know personally how your dedication your passion for communication changes lives. Every trial endured and weathered in the right spirit makes a soul nobler and stronger than it was before. My life was changed.